For this crochet project, you're going to need your 5.75 millimeter crochet hook, as well as a tapestry needle or darning needle, and I always use the one with the pointed end, as well as a pair of scissors. For this project, I'm using 100% cotton yarn. It's a medium four by Sugar and Cream Lily, and I'm using this large cone of yarn, so it's about 400 grams, 14 ounces, or 706 yards. So we're going to start with the magic circle. Just drape the yarn across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers, and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then just take your crochet hook, go under those two loops around the middle fingers, and then just bring up a loop and then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to take your crochet hook, go under those two loops again, bring up a loop and then you're just going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through both loops for a single crochet. Then you're going to make a chain of two, one, Two, and this will count as your first double crochet in the magic circle. Then you're going to yarn over, go into the magic circle, bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook. Go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two of the loops. And then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the two remaining loops. Then you completed a double crochet. So now you have two double crochets in the magic circle. And we're going to make a total of 16 double crochet into the magic circle. So you just yarn over, go into the magic circle, bring up a loop, you have three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two, Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then go through two. So there's my third double crochet. And again, we're going to make 16 double crochet into the magic circle. I'm just going to make a couple more with you. There's four. five, six, seven, eight. So you can move it over too. So you just grab your double crochet and kind of scoot them over. So go ahead, finish making a total of 16 double crochet into the magic circle and then come back. This is how your work should look after finishing 16 double crochet into the magic circle. So then just take your forefinger and thumb and you're going to hold the base of the 16 double crochet. And then you have these two loops on the opposite side. You're going to pull on one of them. If it doesn't close, go ahead and let go and then pull on the other one and it should start to close the gap in the center. Don't worry if it doesn't close all the way, you can always close it more later. Then grab that little loose yarn end that you have and pull on that. And then that will finish closing up the magic circle. And we can always close it more later. So now what you're going to do is make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that we made to start. So you're going to take your crochet hook, go into that top stitch, and then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then bring the yarn through both loops on the hook to complete a slip stitch. And then you just finished your first round. 
And now you can turn your work over if you want to close the center of the magic circle completely and just pull on that. And then that closes up the center. And that's why they call it the magic circle because you can magically close the center. And now we're ready for the next round. Now for the first round, you're going to start with a chain of four. One, two, three, four. Now that's going to count as your first treble crochet. Then you want to make a chain of three. One, two, three. And that counts as your chain three between the two treble crochets. Then you're going to make another treble crochet into the same stitch. So right now I have a chain of seven which counts as your first treble and chain three. So now go ahead and yarn over twice. One, two, then go into the same stitch and then bring up a loop. So now you should have four loops on your crochet hook. So you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through only two loops. Now you have three remaining loops on the hook. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through two of the loops. Now you should have two loops remaining. Go ahead and yarn over and go through the two remaining loops. So we have finished our first chain four, which is the treble, chain three in between, and then the treble crochet. So now you're going to chain three, one, two, three. So now you're going to skip two stitches. So make sure you don't skip one. So here you're going to skip the first stitch. You're going to skip the second stitch. And you're going to make a treble crochet into the third stitch. So you're going to yarn over twice and then you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to skip two stitches, one, two, and then go into that third stitch. Bring up a loop. Now you have four loops on the hook. Go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two. Three loops remaining, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two two loops remaining, yarn over and then go through those two remaining loops. Then you're going to chain three, one, two, three, and then you're going to make a treble crochet into the same stitch. So yarn over twice, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, and then complete your treble crochet. So you can see how we're making a treble V-stitch. So here's a treble, you have a chain three and then a treble for your first V-stitch and then in between your V-stitches, you're going to have a chain three. So this is a chain three space. And then you have your next treble, chain three, treble, V-stitch. So now we're going to create another chain three space between your treble V-stitches. So you're going to chain three, one, two, three, and then you're going to skip two stitches on the circle, skip two stitches and make a treble crochet into the third stitch. So you yarn over twice, go into that third stitch, bring up a loop, 
and then make your treble crochet. Then you're going to chain three. We're going to make our treble V stitch. So go ahead and chain three. And then make a treble into the same stitch. So now you can see that we have one, two, three V stitches. So go ahead, continue making these all the way around. So you should have your treble V stitches with chain three spaces in between them. And you're skipping two stitches. And by the time you reach back to the start, you should have a total of six treble V stitches. So now you can see that I have, here's our starting V stitch. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And I just finished my last one and I'm back to where I started with our first chain four. So count up to four, one, two, three, four. Because remember, we have the chain three between the two treble V stitches. And then between the V stitches, you have a chain three space. So now, after you count it up to the fourth chain, you're going to take and make a slip stitch into that fourth chain. So you just take your crochet hook, go into that fourth chain, and then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then just bring the yarn through both loops on the hook to finish joining the round. Oh, actually, you want to make a chain three space See how you don't have a chain three space and all the V stitches have a chain three space? So we're going to undo that. And then before we make that slip stitch, you want to add a chain three. So go ahead and just make a chain three. One, two, three. And then make a slip stitch into that fourth chain. I want to make sure I have the right one because you should have three chains in between so I think I got the wrong one. So counting from the base there's one, two, three, four. So it's actually the stitch before and I can double check because now I have three chains between the next treble. So then you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops for a slip stitch and then you're ready for your next round. So I'm just going to double check this with you and make sure you did it correctly. You can see the beautiful round that you've created. So I'm just going to show you here is our first V stitch, chain three space, second V stitch, chain three space, third V, fourth V, fifth V, sixth V and then you chain three space and you're back to where you started. So now you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to slip stitch into that first V stitch for the second round. So just go into that space in the first V stitch and you're just going to yarn over and then bring the yarn through your loop on your hook for a slip stitch and now you're in the V stitch, the treble V stitch. And you're going to make another treble V stitch. So to start you chain four, one, two, three, four. And then remember you have a chain three in between the two trebles. So this first chain four counts as your first treble. So go ahead and chain three more. One, two, and then make a treble crochet into the same chain three space of the V, treble V from the previous round. So yarn over twice, go into the same space, bring up a loop, and then complete a treble crochet. So 
So we just completed a V-stitch, treble V-stitch in the previous rounds, treble V-stitch. Then you're going to make a chain of three. One, two, three. And then we're going to make a popcorn stitch into the previous round's chain three space, which is the space between your two treble V stitches from the previous round. So you're going to yarn over. You're going to yarn over twice because we're going to make a treble popcorn stitch. So I yarned over twice. I'm going to go into that chain three space. I'm going to bring up a loop and then I'm going to make a treble stitch. And you're going to make a total of five treble stitches into the same chain three space. So I'm going to show you a couple of them. So that's two. I'll make one more with you. And again, you need a total of five treble stitches into the same chain three space. So, so far I have three. Go ahead and finish two more in the same chain three space and then come back. Now, after you finish the five treble crochet, go ahead and leave a large loop and then you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into the top stitch of that first treble stitch that you made out of the five. Then you're going to grab that loop, go ahead and cinch that loop down, and then bring that loop through the stitch of the first treble to complete a popcorn stitch. Then you're going to chain one to complete the popcorn stitch. So we just completed a popcorn stitch, now you're going to chain three again. One, two, three. And now you're going to make a V-stitch in the previous rounds, chain three stitch of that treble V-stitch. So I'm going to yarn over twice. I'm going to go into that chain three space of the previous rounds, treble V-stitch, bring up a loop, Yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. So I just finished a treble stitch. Now I'm going to chain three, one, two, three, and then I'm going to complete another treble into the same chain three space to complete my treble V stitch. And that is the pattern that you're going to repeat all the way around. So you started with the V-stitch, treble V-stitch in the previous rounds, treble V-stitch. You chained three, you made your popcorn into the chain three space between the two treble V-stitches from the previous round. Then you made another chain three. So you have a chain three before popcorn and after the popcorn stitch. Then I made another V-stitch. So I'm going to make one more set with you, but you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to where you started. So now I'm going to start with the chain of three. And then I'm going to make a popcorn stitch into the chain three space between the two V-stitches but this popcorn is a treble popcorn stitch. So I'm going to make five treble stitches into the chain three space from the previous round that's between the two treble V stitches from the previous round. It's my second treble. Third, fourth, and 
and fifth. So now I'm going to leave a large loop. I'm going to go into the top stitch of my first treble that I made in this chain three space for the popcorn. I'm going to grab that loop, cinch it down, and then bring that loop through that first stitch. Try to anyway. There we go. Then I'm going to chain one to complete the popcorn. So I just completed a popcorn stitch. Now I'm going to chain three. And then I'm going to make a treble V stitch into the next V stitch, treble V stitch from the previous round. And that's basically what you do for this round. So I'm going to have you repeat these, this pattern. Let me just finish this one and then I'll show you again. So you can see what the pattern looks like. So you start with your treble V stitch in the V stitch from the previous round, chain three, popcorn into the chain three space between the two V treble V stitches from the previous round. After you finish your popcorn, you chain three and then repeat all the way around back to where you started and then come back. So now you should be back to where you started and you should have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six popcorn stitches. And then I finished with a chain of three. And then you're going to count again for four, one, four chains, one, two, three, four, because you want the top stitch of the treble crochet because you're making this is a treble V stitch and you know that with a treble V stitch you have a chain three between the two treble stitches so you want to count up four and then go into that stitch to make a slip stitch and essentially you're making a slip stitch into the top stitch of the treble crochet so you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. Made that loop a little tight for a slip stitch. And then you just finished the first round with the popcorn stitches. So now for that loose yarn in that you had from the magic circle, you can place that onto your tapestry needle and then just kind of weave it in the wrong side. So the wrong side is where the back of the popcorn stitches are. And then just kind of weave it through. I usually go through a couple of times just kind of burying it. And then once it's buried you can take and trim it. And then this is the right side. So now we're going to move up to the next round. So you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to slip stitch into the first V stitch from the previous round. So you just go right into that chain three space and then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through that chain three space and the loop on your hook. So now you're in that chain three space and you're going to make a V stitch to start the round. So to start, you, again, you're going to chain four one, two, three, four. And remember, that first chain four counts as your first treble crochet for the round. Now you're going to chain three. One, two, 
three, and then you're going to make a treble crochet into the same space. So just yarn over twice, go into the same space, bring up a loop, and then complete your treble crochet. And then you'll also complete your beginning treble V-stitch for the round. So now you're going to be making a popcorn stitch in the chain three space before your previous round's popcorn and after the previous round's popcorn stitch. So you're going to be making five treble crochet into the chain three space before the previous round's popcorn stitch. So I'm just going to make a couple of them with you on video tutorial and then I'll let you finish. So again, you want a total of five treble crochet. Now if you want to, you can make a six treble crochet popcorn, but I usually stick to always the same size, so you determine if you want that, you know, a six treble popcorn or not. So for mine, I'm sticking with the five treble. So I just wanted to let you know that there's no rule that you have to stick with five. I just picked that arbitrary number, believe it or not, for this popcorn. So that's three. So go ahead, finish your five treble crochet and then come back and I'll finish the popcorn with you. So now I've finished my five treble crochet. So I'm going to go into that stitch, grab my loop, bring it through, and then chain one. Then you're going to chain three. and then make a popcorn into a treble popcorn into that chain three space after the previous rounds popcorn. So go ahead, finish your five treble into the same space to make a popcorn and then come back. So this is what it looks like after I finished my popcorn. So I made a popcorn before and a popcorn after the previous round's popcorn stitch. And then there's a chain three in between. So now I'm going to chain three again. And then I'm going to make a V-stitch, treble V-stitch into the previous round's treble V stitch. Chain three. So I made a treble and a chain three. And then another treble to complete the treble V stitch. And then you repeat. So you can see how I started with the treble V stitch. Oh, I forgot my chain three, so I'm going to have to go back. So don't forget, like I did, after you make your V-stitch, your starting V-stitch, you're going to need a chain three. So you chain three. and then you make your popcorn stitch. So again, I started with the V-stitch, chain three, and then make your treble popcorn stitch into the chain three space before the previous round's popcorn. I'll go ahead and finish this with you since I messed up. So I made five. I'm going 
going to complete my popcorn. Chain one. So, so far I have my V-stitch, chain three, popcorn, chain three, Then I'm going to make another popcorn into the chain 3 space just after the popcorn from the previous round. Then I'm going to finish my next popcorn stitch, chain one, and then chain three. Don't forget that chain three. I almost did it again. So chain three, and then make your V-stitch, your treble V-stitch in the previous rounds, treble V stitch. So now I'm going to show you. So you can see how we started with the V stitch. You chain three, make your popcorn stitch in the chain three space prior to the previous round's popcorn stitch. After you finish that popcorn, you chain three make another popcorn stitch after in the chain three space after the previous rounds popcorn then you chain three and then make your treble v-stitch in the previous rounds v-stitch and you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning so again don't forget that starting chain three and then you can start your popcorn into the chain three space before the previous round's popcorn. So go ahead, finish this pattern all the way around, back to the beginning, and then come back. So now you can see how the second round is looking, and you have the one popcorn, and now you have the two. I'm back to where I started. I finished with a chain of three. And now I'm going to count up four from my beginning chain. So one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to make a slip stitch into that fourth chain. And I should have three chains before the next treble for the V-stitch. Then I'm just going to yarn over and then pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch to join the round. And so every the way you know that you've done it correctly is of course that your popcorns are all lining up. You have one and then two. Same thing. And that way you know you've done it correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and count them though. So from here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So now we're going to move up to the next round. So you're going to slip stitch into the first V-stitch, just like we've done from the previous round. And again, so now that you know that we're starting with the V-stitch, I'm going to go ahead and chain seven because remember you have a chain four for the treble and then the chain three for the chain three spe space between the two trebles for the v-stitch so I'm going to start with the chain of seven then I'm going to make a treble crochet into the same space And then I completed my starting 
V-stitch. Now, again, you don't want to forget your, your chain three. So last round I forgot the chain three. So remember to chain three. One, two, three. And now you're going to be making, for the previous rounds, you made one popcorn. The next round you made two. So this round, you know you're going to be making three popcorn stitches. So I'm going to only start you with the first one and then I'm going to go ahead and let you finish on your own. Remember that in between each of the popcorn stitches, after you finish them, you need a chain three stitch. So I'm going to make my first popcorn into the chain three space before the previous round's popcorn. And remember I need five treble So I have my five treble crochet stitches. Now I'm going to make my popcorn. Then I'm going to chain one. Then I know I need a chain three space between the popcorns. So one, two, three. Then I'm going to go to the next chain three space from the previous round make five double, treble crochet into that space for my next popcorn. So again, this is where we started with the V-stitch. Chain three, popcorn, chain three, popcorn. So I have my finished five treble. I'm going to make my popcorn stitch. Then I'm going to chain three. And then make my popcorn stitch. So I finished my third popcorn stitch. I just need to make my chain one to complete the popcorn. Then I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. And then I'm going to make my treble V-stitch in the V-stitch from the previous round. my chain three, another treble to complete the v, treble v-stitch, so that's it for this round. I'm just going to show you again. So you started with your treble v-stitch, chain three, popcorn, popcorn, chain three, popcorn in between the previous rounds, two popcorn stitches, chain three, and then another popcorn. So you can see how you have one, two, and now you have three popcorn stitches. Then, of course, don't forget your chain three, and then your treble V-stitch in the previous rounds V-stitch. So go ahead, repeat this pattern all the way around, back to the beginning, and then come back. So now when you finish your last chain three, you can go ahead and slip stitch just like you've done before. Count up four, one, two, three, four, and make your slip stitch. And then you're ready for the next round. So I'm just going to show you, because I'm not going to finish the subsequent rounds with you now, so you know how to do it now. So you can see the beautiful design that you're creating. And I'm just going to show you 
If you imagine this is like a pie, you can see that you have your triangles here forming. So here's your first triangle, here's your second, your third, your fourth, your fifth, and your sixth. So you can see that you're going in chronological order. So you have your first popcorn, then in the next round you had your two popcorns stitches, and then in the third round you had your three popcorn stitches. So you can see how we're increasing. You're going to continue to make each round the same way except that you're increasing the number of popcorns with each subsequent round. So I just wanted to point out that one of the things that I found was placing a stitch marker at each of the V stitches between the triangle slices helped me from mistakenly putting one of the popcorn stitches into that separation V stitch. So the stitch markers in those locations help me know that I need to not put a popcorn stitch into the V stitch. So that's something that you can do for each of the V stitch separations so that you don't make that mistake that I did because if you do then you're going to end up having to frog your work which means that you're going to have to undo your work which you don't want to have happen. So that's a little trick that I did that you might want to do. So you're going to keep increasing so the next round will be four and then the next one will be five and the next one will be six and then you're going to stop when you get to seven the round that has seven popcorns to complete that pie. And you're going to have seven popcorns for each of the six pieces that you have in the pie. And I'm just using that as an analogy. So you're going to continue, again I showed you all the way up to three, but you're going to continue each round and then stop when you get to seven popcorns for one of the slices. So seven popcorns and then come back and then I'll show you what to do from there. So now you should have finished your triangular popcorn stitches that started with one, then two, three, four, five, six, and ended with seven. So each of your six slices with the popcorn stitches should have the same look and ended with the seven popcorn stitches. So now I've already finished the round and again this is after you finish the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven popcorn stitches and you can see how I made my last chain three and then slip stitch into the V stitch that separates the popcorn slices, pizza slices was which I'll call them. So now you're in the V stitch so we're going to start our next round. So I've already chained. I'm going to go ahead and bring that back down. So I'm back down to the slip stitch into the first V stitch for the next round. So again, you're going to start with your chain of seven. By now you know that that first chain four is a treble and then the chain three is the chain three space and then we'll make another treble into the same space to complete a v-stitch. So I'm going to start with a chain of seven and then I'm going to make a treble crochet into the same space just like we've done before Now for this round you're still going to chain three but we don't want a popcorn into the chain three space before the popcorn stitch because for this round we're going to decrease the popcorn stitches to only six. Remember the previous round had seven and now for this round we want six. So you're going to make a treble crochet into that chain three space, the next chain three space. So you just yarn over twice 
and then make your treble crochet into that chain three space. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up my stitch markers. So you can go ahead and leave a little bit of a loop. And then take your stitch markers and I would recommend, if you haven't been using stitch markers, I would recommend a stitch marker to help you keep track. But go ahead and move your stitch markers up to the V-stitch. So now I have a stitch marker at the start V-stitch and all of my other V-stitches so I know not to put a popcorn in those stitches and also I'll know that's where I need the treble before my V-stitch. So it just is helpful because I actually had to frog a little bit because I had um, just not paid attention to the V-stitches that separate and made a popcorn into them. So I want to avoid that mistake because nobody likes frogging. So that's just a helpful tip that you may like to use that helped me avoid having to frog my work or undo my work. So now I finished. I'm going to go over it again. So I started with my V-stitch, made my chain three, and then a treble crochet stitch into the next chain three space before the popcorn. So now you want to chain three again. And then you're going to make your popcorn stitch into the next chain three space. So go ahead and make your popcorn stitch. And you're going to be making a popcorn stitch. Make six popcorn stitches. Remember you need a chain three space in between. And then you need six of them. And then come back. So now you can see we started with the tip of the triangle and then you're working out towards the base of the triangle and now at the base of the triangle you're going to get smaller again and you're going to form a tip. So this is the first decrease round for the popcorn stitches. So remember the previous round had seven and now we have six. So that brings me to the next V-stitch. As you can see, I have my little stitch marker in there. And you're going to make a treble crochet into the chain three space right before the V-stitch. And then you're going to chain three. And then you're going to make a V-stitch into the separation V-stitch between the, I'm going to call them pizza slices. So now I'm going to make my V-stitch. So remember that starts with a treble crochet stitch, just like you've been doing. chain three. And I'm not going to remove my stitch marker. Usually I can see it and I know even if it's on a previous round. But if it's easier for you, you can move it up if you want to. It's, it's just a personal choice. It just helps me because like I said, I had to frog my work and that was not fun. It's never fun. So having my stitch marker there helped me tremendously so that doesn't happen because it's easy to get distracted once you fall into a routine it's easy to make a mistake so that just helps you prevent the mistake then you're going to chain three again and then you're going to make a treble crochet into the first chain three space before the next popcorn and you're just going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to where you started so again, the next, you're going to chain three. Don't forget your chain threes. Then you're going to make your popcorn stitches. 
So again, you want six popcorn stitches into the chain three spaces with chain threes separating. So here you can see I have my popcorn chain three popcorn. I'm making six of them. So go ahead, repeat this pattern all the way around back to where you started and then come back. So now I'm back to where I started. I finished my chain of three and I have my first V stitch that I started for the round. I'm going to count up four, one, two, three, four, and you're going to make a slip stitch into that fourth chain from the base of the V stitch. Just yarn over and then pull the yarn through both loops on the hook to complete the round. Then you're going to slip stitch into that V stitch. And then we're going to move up to the next round. So it's that simple. And I'm going to get you started on this next round. So again, you start with your chain of seven. And then make your treble crochet into the same stitch. So you completed your starting V stitch for the round. Then you're going to chain three. So this time, remember the previous round had six popcorn stitches, so the next round, the round that we're working on, should have five popcorn stitches. So now, after I made my chain of three, in the next chain three space, just make one treble crochet. Then you're going to chain three again. And then make a treble crochet into the next chain three space right before the popcorn stitch. Then you want to chain three again. And then you're going to make your popcorn stitch. Chain three, popcorn stitch, until you have a total of five popcorn stitches. And then this is what your work will look like. So I started with my V-stitch, chain three, treble crochet into the first chain three space, chain three, treble crochet into the next chain three space, chain three, and then you start your popcorns. So again, for this round, we have five popcorn stitches, and then you end with a chain three, treble, chain three, treble, chain three, and then your V-stitch with the V-stitch separation between the pizza slices. So again, I'm calling these pizza slices. So now you know how to make the rows where you're going to decrease down to one. So the previous rows, we have, we ended the largest row with seven popcorn stitches, and we went down to six, five, you're going to go all the way down to one to form your triangle. Or actually, it will be your diamond. So we have the bottom of the diamond shape, and now we're making the top of the diamond. So that's how you create the top portion of the diamond, so go ahead and finish all the way down to one popcorn stitch using this method, and then come back. So I just wanted to show a close-up of the finished star, and the measurement across the circle is 40 and a half inches. So now you're finished with your diamond. You started with your first popcorn and then you went up all the way to seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then you went down again for the top of the diamond. 
and now you're back to where you started and I already made my v-stitch to start the next round and then I also made a chain of three and then you're just going to continue making one treble crochet into each of the chain three spaces and then when you reach the next oops you also want to make sure that you make your chain three so then you make your chain three and then you make your next treble into the next chain three space and then when you reach your next the V stitch you're going to make your V stitch into the stitches that were your V stitch separation between the two diamonds in the round. So now I just wanted to show you this is where we started the V stitch and I made one treble crochet in the chain three space and then I made a chain three another treble crochet in the next chain three space and I repeated that all the way across to the next V stitch. So here's the V stitch and again the V stitch is what was separating the two diamonds. So here's one diamond and here's the second diamond and you have your V stitch in between. And remember we had five, actually we had six diamonds and in between each diamond you have this V stitch. So you're going to continue your V stitch in that spot and then just one treble with the chain three separating into each of the chain three spaces. And you're going to repeat that all the way around and then that will be the sides of the if you're using it for a table cover that would be the sides that would drape over the sides of the table. And so you would just continue that same pattern all the way around for as many rounds as you want for the length of your the sides of your covering. And I just wanted to show you this is how much I have left so far. So I have one cone that I started with. So this is what I have left and I plan on using the rest up for this one. So now I just wanted to show you so here is the start, the V stitch that we started. And again, the V stitches all line up. Those are between the two diamonds. So here's one diamond and here's the other diamond. And here's the V stitch that separates your six diamonds. And now for each round that you make, you'll be making your V stitch, your chain three, and then your treble into the chain three spaces. And this is what mine looks like after I made one treble into each of the chain, previous rounds chain three space with the chain three in between and then I made it to my next V stitch and made a V stitch then chain three so that's what mine looks like and you'll just keep repeating that pattern until you have the length that you want for the sides of your covering so if you're using it for a table covering then you would make it continue the same pattern for each subsequent round for whatever length that you want for your table covering. Now if you want a smaller table covering I would recommend using a smaller crochet hook so you could use maybe a 4 millimeter or a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook and that will make your table covering smaller. So I just wanted to show you how much I have left over so for mine, I'm only going to use this as a back covering for the couch and that's just during the holidays because of the beautiful star that's created on it. So I'm only going to make this last round and then I'll be done. But for those that are making it a table covering, you can just continue the same pattern for the length that you want down the sides of your table covering. So depending on the size that you make, you may need another cone, but I wanted to give you an idea of how much I have left. I have plenty left over to make a pretty good sized um, length for the, the sides of the covering. But again, depending on the length that you create, you may need another one of these to finish yours.